All right. We are going to start talking about Active Directory delegation, delegated permissions. I'm going to start by saying forgive the mess that's behind me. I'm in the middle of a bit of renovation on my house, so my house is chaotic and I ended up with junk in the background. Um, all right, so I've got my demo domain set up here and there's going to be uh, a number of use cases where you might want to delegate permissions in Active Directory. Specifically, it's going to be if you have other technical teams that need to do some sort of administrative task, but you don't want to give them full rights to the domain. You don't want to give them domain admin for obvious reasons. So the way we do that is to delegate permissions in AD itself to those users so they only have rights to do what they absolutely need to do. This is following the principle of least priv privilege where you only want people to be able to do the things they need to do to complete their job and you don't want to have them uh, with extra permissions that could be compromised later. So this is pretty straightforward. Uh, Active Directory permissions operate very similar to file system permissions. So if you're familiar with that, uh, it's going to be basically the same thing it follows the rules of inheritance uh, it's very similar it's basically the same UI as NTFS permissions so I think it's going to be a pretty familiar concept with people um, following that same idea of permissions in Active Directory being the same as file systems you want to follow some of those ba also the best uh, practices that you'd use for file shares and permissions for that being you don't want to grant individual users permissions to random places. You want to use uh, create a security group, uh, have that group named after the permissions it's going to have, and then assign the permissions to that group. And then um, you'll be able to track then who has those rights. And that group membership can change by adding or removing users, but you don't actually have to modify the permissions then. And then you also don't end up with a bunch of um, uh, ACL permissions for random SIDs if users get deleted. It's, only, it's always going to exist assuming that group doesn't go away. So following that practice, the first thing we're going to do is create the group for the permissions. The scenario that I'm going to set up here or that I'm going to use for the test domain is that uh, we have we want to grant our help desk users the ability to reset passwords for users. They don't need to do anything else in the domain. Um, they might need other permissions for their role, but that's a really simple use case and a really common one for delegating AD rights. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to create a group for uh, the group that we'll use to assign those permissions. Now, um, if I have I have not mentioned it yet in these videos, but I'm a stickler for naming conventions. It's going to make it easier to identify the purpose for different things um, and what exactly that's doing. So in this case. Uh, I have an OU for security groups and security relates to actual granting permissions or rights for something. So all of the groups in this OU are going to start with SEC for security and we're granting an Active Directory permissions. So AD is going to be the next section of the name. Uh, and uh, to make it obvious the permissions I am assigning or where I'm assigning those permissions, I'm going to include a reference to the OU. All of the users in this demo domain are in the people OU over here. So that is what I'm going to name the group. All right. We have the security group, it's an Active Directory permissions, and it's the people OU. And then I'm going to end it with the permissions I'm granting. So uh, user password reset. And I'm going to avoid spaces just so. I can. All right. So, security group, AD, people, user, password, reset. Now that I have this group, uh, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and assign uh, those permissions. So, right click on my people OU, and the top of your right click menu in AD, you have this delegate control permissions. This is exactly what you use to create uh, delegations. Do next. I'm going to add. The group that I just created. Hit next. Now, this screen is kind of do you want to use a canned set of permissions or do you want to create a custom one? Wherever possible, 
it's going to be best to use the regular sets of permissions uh, that they have available because Active Directory permissions can get very, very detailed and um, a little crazy if you're trying to do them by hand. So you're better off just going with one of these roles. Um, in this case, we're doing password resets and they have a specific permission just for that. Reset user's passwords and force password change at next logon. That's the only thing it allows. It uh, doesn't allow them to uh, modify the users themselves. That's this permission up here, create, delete, and manage user accounts. So for this group, all I want to do is grant the ability to for someone to reset the password. So that's the box I'm going to check. I'm going to hit next. And that's it. I click finish, and now that permission has been assigned to that group. However, there's a couple other scenarios that I want to point out here that we're also going to take into consideration. Our help desk users, um, let's just pick a user as a demo help desk user. So I have admin accounts for L. Evans, N. Green, and C. Beaumont. So I'm going to choose this user because uh, the other two have domain admin accounts. So I'm going to assume that this user uh, is she had, she has a admin account, but she doesn't have a domain admin account. That means she has a technical permission. She needs an account for elevated permissions, but she doesn't need one for a DA. So this is kind of like that in between technical role like help desk. So this will be our sample help desk user. Now she has an admin account. She also has a regular user account, right? If I wanted to grant that permission, uh, grant her the permission I just delegated, which is uh, the ability to reset. Uh, passwords, I could just drop her in this security group. Direct membership, it would work. She'd have that permission to be just fine. However, uh, it's worthwhile to take uh, an extra step before granting permissions. You can grant direct permissions to a user, but it's more useful if you're managing a domain at scale with a lot of users and potentially a lot of different roles and different sets of permissions. Rather than grant users direct permissions like this, as you did with the group, it's better to create a separate group for the role and then use that role group to grant the permissions instead. So what this actually means is uh, I, if this C Beaumont user, I'm pretty sure this user's name is Charlie, Charlotte. I'm going to call her Charlie. So Charlie Beaumont, uh, she's a member of the help desk. I want to be able to just add her to a help desk group and trust that that group will have the permissions it needs to perform that role. Um, so rather than add her to this uh, this delegated group, I'm going to go into my RBAC OU, and RBAC stands for Role-Based Access Control. So I'm going to create a role group for that help desk so that I can drop her in that instead. So I'm going to go new group. I'm going to use RBAC prefix for this. And we're going to do help desk. ADM and ADM is the suffix that I'm using the name to indicate that it's going to be an administrator account or it's an account with elevated permissions beyond just a regular user. So these are the accounts that a user would use to perform administrative functions outside of just their regular user that they use for like browsing the internet or checking email or stuff. So there's my help desk role group and I'm going to go back to this AD group that I have permissions and I'm going to add that RBAC role group there and then I'm going to go back and I'm lastly going to add um, Charlie Beaumont here to that help desk. Now you'll notice I'm adding her admin account to the admin group. There's might be scenarios where you want to have roles two copies of a role group. You want the one for the regular user and the one for the administrative user accounts. Um, an example of a situation like that would be if you uh, have a file share for this role, like the help desk team has a help desk team file share. Um, oftentimes that user, when they're logged into their regular workstation, they're going to be logged in with their regular user, not their administrative user. So it's going to be difficult for them if they're trying to create documentation or read a process or work on something from their regular desktop uh, that's hosted in that, 
that helped us share, they don't want to have to switch and use their admin user from the regular desktop just to act as file share. So in that case, it's probably best to have a help desk uh, administrative role group and a help desk regular user role group so that you can grant permissions to uh, the regular users as well as the administrator. But you want those separated uh, to make sure that administrative permissions are only assigned to administrative accounts. So I'm going to hit the OK here, and that's it. We've now delegated permissions. Uh, if I were to add a different user, like let's say uh, David Miller here uh, moved to the help desk or got hired as a help desk, he's going to get um, he's going to get an ad administrative account to perform his administrative tasks. case because I'm a stickler D Miller ADM and set his password what's the letter okay so he just got promoted to help desk we created him an admin account and now we need to grant him the permissions that come with that help desk role so the last thing we'll do is we will add him the RBAC group. By doing that, he now has the permissions to reset passwords just like we've delegated. So the process is uh, a new user starts, they get their accounts provisioned, all their accounts have to be have need is to be dropped into the role group and then that this role group is granted all the permissions that you'd need. So this was granted our AD permissions. If you have file share access, it would be granted to this group as well. If you have application access, like if there's certain applications that uh, are like you grant access to the application via a group um, you grant that also using the role group so that's how role-based access permissions are structured and how you delegate Active Directory uh, security permissions using that delegation wizard the one last thing I'm going to take a look at here actually while I'm thinking about it is the actual um, permissions of a group. You can't normally see them, but if I go to view and advanced features and then come back here, I can look at the security tab just like we do with a regular file share window. So these should mirror what you'd see in like an NTFS permissions thing. And you can see here, this is the security group that we delegated permissions and it doesn't actually have that permission set listed and this is kind of what I was talking about when I mentioned you don't want to do like custom role delegations if you can avoid it because the permissions list is insane so I can't see it here but if I click on advanced it's gonna pull up this very familiar window and I go here you can see it's got a reset password permissions now just for the sake of example if I click edit here and show you what's available to adjust you've got where a regular file share, if you were working the permissions there, it would be like read, write, delete, right? Here, it's all of these different levels of permissions for each attribute that you could modify in an Active Directory user. It gets very insane. And you can see down here, read and write password last set, which is required for um, resetting a password. There's all of these attributes that are grouped together for performing different Active Directory functions. And unless you're really confident in what you're doing, it's just not worth doing custom permissions because you don't want to have to deal with this mess. So just stick with the approved roles wherever possible and it's going to save yourself a large headache later. Um, one other thing I was going to talk about as well is so we granted the help desk users the ability to reset people's passwords on regular users. However, what if we don't want those help desk users to be able to reset the passwords for administrative accounts? Because that's really should be, uh, it's a sort of task that should be taken to the next level of technical um, permissions, which would be like systems admins or engineers, architects. We don't really want just uh, end user support, help desk users to be able to reset admin accounts. There needs to be like an extra check there. So because these OUs are nested, the permissions from the people you are going to inherit into admins. So if I go same here, properties, security, I see this delegated group 
with the ability to reset passwords. Hold on, let me find it here, right there. If I want to prevent uh, permissions from applying to an OU that's beneath another one, I have to do the same thing that I would do for NTFS permissions. I would disable inheritance. I'm going to convert the permissions on this object into explicit permissions. That way they're going to be exactly the same, but they're no longer inheriting those permissions. This OU now will have just explicit permissions set on it. And once I do that, I can go to these permissions and I can remove them. And now that group no longer has rights to this admin's OU to reset passwords. Hit yes, hit OK. And now we know that uh, the security group has rights here, but it does not have rights here under admin accounts. So what we've just gone over, we talked about delegating specific Active Directory permissions using that delegation wizard, making sure you're following best practices and delegating that to a group and not an individual user. This makes management um, and auditing a lot easier. It's uh, by far the way you want to do it. You want to avoid doing uh, explicit permissions. We also kind of branched off and talked about using, building a role-based access control model where instead of adding users to the groups that have direct permissions, you instead are adding users to their role groups and putting their role groups in the direct permissions groups. It's one layer of abstraction, but it makes managing, especially managing at scale, a lot easier because from an administrative standpoint where you're creating new users, all you have to do is add them to one group versus try and remember and track the multiple groups for different permissions you might need for that user's role. And then we talked about um, looking how to look at the active directory permissions and kind of we took a look at the different attributes that you could edit and talked about why you don't really want to get into that. And then lastly, we finished up by talking about um, removing inherited permissions from an OU above by converting the permissions from inherited to explicit and then removing the individual permissions you don't want to inherit. That's it for Active Directory delegation. Uh, our next topic I think is going to be rem RODCs.